All right, so today we're just gonna talk about understanding player archetypes. So we won't get into the linemen because I don't think there's much difference from the linemen compared to the skill position players. So we'll start with receivers. Um, as you can see, I have different types of receivers on my field. Um, certain receivers have different animations, obviously, but I'll make an example for, for this instance, rather. Look at Jerry Rice, right? He is 6'2", and he has a balanced stat in his arsenal. Um, nothing really shock. He's more of a possession type of catcher, so he's not going to be your fastest guy that will be able to ag like four people in the skies and stuff like that when he catches the ball, but he will he'll have good routes where he can possession catch the ball. So he's like a security type of catcher. If you can look here, I also have Steve Largent. They're kind of the same way. Um, yes, I have a Seahawks theme team. Sorry for anybody else that has different type of teams, but yes, Seahawks are my first team that I built in Madden. Um, and then we're just gonna go to we're gonna go to the this is like a specialist kind of thing, right? Like Devin Hester, it has terrible route running. Like yes, he can catch drags, and yes, if he's wide open down the field, he will catch a bomb once in a while, but. When I streak him down the field, he usually doesn't run the route correctly. And I only use him because if you look in my special teams, he is my first option. Um, there's a reason for that, and I'm going to get into it right now. So Devin Hester, he is really fast and really agile. Um, so when someone tries to hit stick you, they have to line you up perfectly for you to fumble. Now, if they don't, then you'll just get tackled or you might like, you might cough the ball up in a weird angle depending on how you run. But with human joystick, it's like really hard. Um, I had human joystick on him, but I'm waiting for his next card. So um, yeah, just saving up for that. Obviously, Devin Hester's not leaving my team. But yeah, so he's the more agile type of receiver. Um, I sometimes put him in, sneak him in the field if I like want to throw like a short drag just to see what my opponent's doing. But no, I don't really like he's not my primary receivers. Um, he's not one of my primary receivers. So these three DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Robbie Anderson. Um, Metcalf is a strong receiver. He is 6'3", and he's actually really good. Um, but the problem I have with him is that sometimes, unlike Jerry or Steve Largent, he doesn't catch the ball all the time. So if he's in a one-on-one, -on -one, he shouldn't have too much of a problem catching. But sometimes when I see Jerry open or I see Metcalf open depending on the situation say like if both of them are double team and I had to throw to one or the other I would most likely throw to Jerry just because that's a safer route um, so yeah and then we're just gonna go to uh, receivers the other two receivers sorry um, these are the guys that are like the Tyreek Hill type of players they have like the missile icon right here um, sorry let me, whoops, let's go back. We're just gonna, right here, the missile icon, and Robbie Anderson has it too. Um, so, the missile icon means that, yes, you can have all the speed in the world, but if you click on his card, which I'm about to do, um, his, his catch in traffic is pretty high, but he has low spec catch. And yes, it's a 99 catch, but if he gets smothered or anything like that, it's really hard to see. I mean, it's really hard for him to get caught, catch the ball, rather, 
in front of someone else. Um, so yeah. Uh, Robbie Anderson. All right. So this guy is kind of the same way, but I like him a little bit more than Lockett. Another thing I need to show you about Lockett is uh, his press coverage is terrible. So I mean, sorry, beat press is terrible. So he has like a sixty or something like that, if I remember correctly. Sorry, or eighty six. That's not going to beat anybody. Um, even the simplest corners nowadays has an eighty six press. You know, so he's not gonna. <coughs> sorry, he's not gonna beat any corner if you put him on a streak, beat the press. But if you look at Robbie, right? And you go all the way down. I don't know why my thing is doing this. He has a 90, which is much better. Um, I think the 90 is the threshold for beating the press. And we'll go to look at his full stats. I think it's a little higher because I have to go deep on him. So we'll look here. And his beat press is... Okay, that doesn't want to show me anything. That's cool. Bear with me, guys. Sorry. Uh, his beat press is a, I think, a 92? 93. 93. And that is much better. And a lot of you guys want to know why I don't use Torrey Holt. Um, it's just for personnel reasons, you know. Uh, Torrey Holt is a great receiver, um, but I have to get used to using my Seahawks. They're my first team, and... Skill positions for the Seahawks are real, really valuable. So that's all I'm going to say for that. Um, receivers, you got to have different. If you want to be successful this year, you have to have different types of receivers. Um, you can't just have one type. I have like five different types of receivers, or maybe maybe four. But you have to have different types of receivers on your field. Um, so yeah. And we'll go to tight end. Um, Gronk, we'll look at him. He's more of like one of these guys that um, blocks for me. You know, he's really good in the end zone. Tight ends don't really matter. The only other tight end I use right now is Greg Olson. Um, I had Darren Waller, but he just didn't fit my scheme. And I can only get him to 95 speed, which is great for a tight end, but it was just... Something about Gronk, I feel like, especially later on, um, he'll be getting a card soon, and he'll probably be the best tight end, in my opinion, just because he can catch and he can block. Um, those two are the most important things I look for in a tight end. Speed is not crucially important for a tight end, but you know the fact that he can hold the line, um, I'm happy. So, tight end, he's more of like a possession and... Possession and, uh, I, I say possession and blocking tight end. Yeah, run blocking tight end, rather. I don't know if he's really good at pass block, but I, I don't think he does, so we're not going to get into that. But um, get a tight end that you can rely on deep in the end zone because um, I don't. Th I think 9 out of 10 times Gronk will catch a ball for me in the end zone. So, uh, yeah. And then we're moving on to the halfbacks. Um, I don't really run the ball that much, but this dude, Barry Sanders, is something else. Uh, yes, I have a lot of halfbacks, but uh, that's just because I'm a fan of them. So Barry is the first person to get human joystick. And for a halfback to get human joystick, it is literally insane. Um, Human joystick is one of the best abilities you can have on any skill position, whether it's receiver. I don't know about quarterback because you get that little delay when you hold escape artists and stuff like that, so you're not running at full speed. But um, people that know how to hold the left trigger and hold the right trigger at the same time to run, um, unless you have like the... I think it's called QB Blast. That can help you as well with Escape Artists. But you're missing out on Dashing Jedi, Gunslinger, Identifier, um, 
stuff like that. So you can only choose up to four abilities, I believe, right now. And the only one as of today that has four abilities for a mobile quarterback is Randall Cunningham. But we're not here to talk about that right now. We're just here to talk about halfbacks. So halfbacks. Um, B.R. Sanders is great. Uh, the only problem I have with him, or I shouldn't say it's a problem because I have other alternatives. So as you can see, Barry is sh very shifty, um, which means that he's not going to have a high carrying. So we'll look into his stats right now. He has a 95 carrying after I counted him up with um, zone run. Uh, zone run should give him plus two, so his base carry is a 93. A 93 carrying means that anybody with the higher hip power than your carrying can make you fumble on the first play. Um, so Sean Taylor, Taylor Mays, Night Train Lane, a lot of the middle linebackers I'm not going to name because there's all of them can probably make Barry fumble if he's lined up correctly. But what I love about Barry is that his ability, first one free, um, that gives him the opportunity to shift and maneuver anytime he wants out of the pocket. So that's very good. Um, he also, even though it's not active all the time, I think the ability I have on him is, let me think, let's see, I have to do a little recap, yeah, so I have spin cycle and outside zone groove because I run stretch a lot, and I also run counter plays too, so pin and pull, uh, some of you guys also saw that I have go deep on him and you're wondering why I don't have zone run, or, yeah, so he comes with a 94 carry, my bad. Scratch what I just said. I have to go deep on him. So he could get to 96, um, I believe. But because of John Madden coach for rushing, he has a 95. Um, so, yeah. The blue... The blue attributes that you see on this card right here, where it says 95 carrying, that's... That does not tell the full story because that's very inaccurate. Um, like the you you want the ones that are the white ones. Like these, I can believe that are the best ones. But like this ninety nine speed is really not a ninety nine speed because I've seen guys that are camped up to ninety nine speed that can tackle Barry, or not even ninety nine speed. Like a pure ninety seven speed without any abilities can probably tackle Barry. What I mean pure is that they have the white stat, not the blue one. Um, so yeah, back to Barry, he probably plays 5% of the whole game for me, only because if I see my opponent doing something I don't know, um, I want to test him, and the way to test him is to run a stretch play, or a inside zone play. And because he has first one free, I know that in my mind, I have a low chance of losing yards. So if I have a low chance of using yar losing yards, obviously you wanna run him, but you gotta be careful if you're a runner too, because you gotta have different halfbacks, and I'm gonna get into these other two and why I have these two. So Barry, really good. Um, get one primary run back, running back that he is human joystick, or just a, one that has like an X Factor light up like Dickerson or Emmett Smith right now. He has a 99, he has four abilities. Um, but guys like that. And then your, your two other ones, um, because again, I have 51 of 50 Seahawks, um, I could sub in Christian McCaffrey, but the reason why I'm not using Christian McCaffrey, and I love Christian McCaffrey for this team, is because I need people that will hold onto the ball. So we're going to get into these two. Amon Green is not really that good because his base card is the 94, I believe. Or maybe even a 95. Um, let's see. I forgot. It's been so long. Yeah, so he, his base card is a 94. Going to his power up makes him a 95. Um, and his carrying is only a 93, right? So if Barry gets tired, I'm going to put Amon Green in. Um, Amon Green only plays one play. That's the key. If you guys, if you have a uh, running back that has 95 or lower, or sorry, less than 95 carrying, do not run him two plays at a time. Um, even though he gets a little tackle on him, the next person that hits him or gets a big hit on him, he will fumble. 
Um, Marshawn Lynch is what lets me do all of this. Because I believe he has like a 98 carrying. Yeah. He's not the fastest running back, but I fused him up because I have Seattle Cam, obviously. So his speed is probably like a 92, maybe a 91, I think. But after all the cams, he goes to a 96 speed. It's not a 96 speed. I know that. I've said that before. Um, so, yeah. The first... I, be, I still believe that the first running back that gets a pure white, like a, let's see, like a white, like, like you see how he has 91 awareness without any chems. The first one that gets one of those is going to be the run, best running back. And I believe that it is going to be this guy right here, Bo Jackson. Um, he's stationed at a 96 already. So his next car that comes out, he's going to be the best player in the game. Uh, McCaffrey's at 94. Um, that's a little slow in my opinion, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Marshawn Lynch, really good card, but he's not fast enough. And because the way that I built my team right now, I'm a pass dominant offense. I need escape. I need a mobile QB. And so we're gonna get into the quarterbacks right now. Um, Mobile QBs allow you to basically run around and be an idiot and just throw a random laser in the backfield. Um, am I proud to play this way? No. But because it's a video game and EA made this game, we're going to do what EA wants us to do. Now, it's I'm not saying that uh, you can't be successful with my type of art personnel with the pocket QB, because I've used Tom Brady. I've put abilities on him, as you can see. Yes, he has Seahawks cam, I, I know, I, I know. He's not part of the Seahawks, he's, he shouldn't have won that Super Bowl, but that's another story for another day. Um, Russell Wilson, he's very good for me. Um, I have balance offense for Seahawks, for Seahawks players. So what that does is it gives him the throw under pressure. And what throw under pressure does is that, say like someone's right in your face, your guy when you throw the ball, or say someone's right in your face, in your quarterback's face, and you try to throw the ball. He will throw the ball completely out of the area. But with the high enough throw under pressure, I think the threshold is 95, um, or maybe 94. I don't know. So, somewhere in the high 90s or mid 90s, I would say. Because I don't have a problem. When people come to my face, or Russell's face, to and I throw the ball, it's usually accurate. So around 94 to 95, anything higher than that is obviously better. But um, he gets the ball off. And I, I just think that's amazing. I do have Mahomes. I've tried Mahomes, but I don't like his release. And I don't like wasting an ability of Gunslinger on him. So that's why I don't use him. But so as you can see, Russell Wilson is a, he's not a scrambling quarterback like Mike Vick, um, Randall Cunningham, Deshaun, uh, not Deshaun Jackson, what am I saying? RG3. So none, none of those guys. And you can see Brady is a field general. Um, he'll have the hot route master to protect it. And he'll give you, if you like throwing the ball out of the pocket. So it's all based on how you want to play the game. I run Saints offense, so I throw the ball a lot. And most of them require me to playmaker. Most of my plays require me to playmaker some guys up the field, to the left, to the right, come back. So having Russell Wilson with the skate artist is pretty crucial. And he has a really good release. Probably, I think, the second best release, release on the ball behind Aaron Rodgers um, so yeah um, you can also go with Aaron Rodgers he's very good and the way that he slings that ball is very very good um, can't emphasize that enough but yeah um, so this is why I have these two uh, sometimes I want to use Brady sometimes I want to use Wilson so now we're going to get into Franco um, fullbacks uh, the way I run my scheme, and I think the way that a lot of you guys run your scheme, um, it's okay to have a Koye too, 
Uh, I think Okoye right now is better than Franco. I've been corrected many times. But Franco gets the job done. I don't think Okoye is going to do much better for me in this certain situation. So let me see if I can get him a better picture. Because this is... He doesn't... Okay. Never mind. That's fine. All-time moments, I guess. He can have that. Um... Franco, the reason why I like him is because that 86 lead block. Um, yes, he doesn't have high run block, but if you go over to his stats over here, um, I'm going to show you guys right here. Uh, no. I'm looking for impact block. Sorry, I might have skipped it too. Probably blind. Um... Yeah, and another thing is 95 stiff arm, 90, 90 spin, and 97 juke move. That's unheard of from a fullback. Very elusive. Um, obviously, he's one of the best fullbacks of all time. We'll get into that discussion later. Where is impact block? Am I just not seeing it? Or did EA just take that out? Okay, there it is. 88 impact block. Um, that is very good. Um, some of you guys that, you know, run the ball... Uh, I only run the ball really in the end zone just because it's so hard to throw the ball in the end zone. But if you do throw the ball um, and you need another guy to block, he's a great blocker. Same thing with Gronk. These the, like these two positions are dead to me, but I have abilities on Gronk right now, obviously. But um, it's just that these guys are my blockers. And Gronk, something about Gronk, when he uh, gets a one-on-one -on -one coverage. I don't know what it is, maybe because he's 6'6", he always wins, so he deserves my X Factor, and Barry obviously right now does because he has that human joystick um, thing. So we'll talk about my X Factors later on after we talk about Franco. So Franco, um, you know, when you start off the game and it's kickoff, people try to kick the ball, like squib kick it or scrub kick it, whatever you want to call it. and they have to realize that they can't do that against me because I have Franco. Franco is not going to be a fullback that has 68 speed and gets fumbles. He actually has 99 carrying, last time I checked. Yeah, he has a 99 carrying, so he won't fumble, and he will spin someone out of their shoes. Um, he also has a really good stiff arm, a 95 stiff arm. Um, for a fullback, that's very good. I think the only person that has a higher one right now is a Koye. So, fullbacks, you want your fullbacks to not only be able to do what running backs can do, but also block, because that's going to be key. Sometimes in my shotgun formations, I'll sub Barry out for Franco just because he blocks better. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? So, yeah. Um, Franco, really good. Um, I would get one. Now, uh... Let's go over to my superstar X factors. Um, Gronk, Barry, and Russell. Yes, you need one in your QB, uh, depending on what you're using, obviously. Um, but I also found that um, Slot Apprentice right now, the scheme that I'm running, is not necessary. Um, I just think it's a waste of a like. In order for me to get Slaughter Apprentice, I would have to use Lockett, but Lockett is just a, it's just so underwhelming because he's only 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 um, and I've tried uh, using abilities on Metcalf, but he only gets two, so like, there's no point in doing that. If he had got three, I might have considered it, but Gronk has my ability for my third one, obviously Barry. Um, the reason why I gave Gronk abilities is because I think that, or at least in my mind, I don't know if this is proven yet, but when I throw the ball to him, he will catch the ball a lot better than a lot of the guys that are covering him, just because he's taller and he has an ability. So I feel like if you put an ability on a card, EA probably shows some favor to you that you don't know about. Um, that's the only reason why I put abilities on him. So yeah, that's the offense. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, yeah, so we're going to head over to the defense now. All right, so defense, 
Um, we'll start with linebackers. Linebackers, the one, the things I'm looking for is block shed and hit power. Um, Bobby Wagner is perfect because he can block shed, he can hit, and I think he has 94 speed. 94 speed. Yeah. So he has a 97 hit power and 94 speed. Um, for a middle linebacker, that's really good. Especially in certain sets that you want to sub uh, your safeties in. I don't need to sub a lot of my safeties in because they're already pretty fast. Like, these linebackers are pretty fast. Malcolm Smith has 91. Obviously, I had to go get the Super Bowl MVP um, when he played, but he has 91 speed, um, 91 block shed, I believe. Yeah, 91 block shed, 91 speed. So he's going to, even though if my opponents want to run, they can try that. Um, KJ, I think, I don't ever use KJ, but, you know, his stats look really good. I just can't stand the fact that he's only 90 speed for a theme diamond. That's kind of slow for him, so I try to stay out of it. I use Bosworth instead. Um, hopefully he'll get a new card. So, as you can see, I have Shaquem Griffin and Justin Curry. Justin Curry never sees my field. Don't worry. I know. To uh, Tatupu never sees my field either. Clowney, obviously he sees my field. Shaquem Griffin is a little bit... If you can hide this Shaquem Griffin, you can be really successful in this game. This guy has one hand, and if you put him in coverage, he's not going to play. But, you look at his speed, and you have a Seahawks theme team, he has 93 speed, 93 excel. Obviously, he can't block shed a lot of people um, because of the given situation. He's an 85 overall, but... If you put him in the right positions, a 93 linebacker coming around the corner will be really deadly. Um, I heard news that someone was making a golden ticket for him. Um, if that is true, I'm going to get go after him. But, yeah. So, and then Clowney is the last one. Obviously, I had to get him. He plays my left side of my edge. He's one of my left edge rushers. Sometimes on the right, depending on the given situation. So, yeah, Clowney um, must have. If you don't have Clowney, have someone else that's comparable, like Lawrence Taylor. Or if you don't have Lawrence Taylor, have even Julius Peppers. Julius Peppers will do the job for you. I have him on, on my Panthers team team. That update will, come in, will be coming out soon, too. So if you guys want to see that, um, leave a like. Um... So yeah, that's the linebackers right here, and we're going to get into the defensive ends and defensive tackles. So what I like my on my defensive end are the guys that will have pass rush elite and that can just take up space so that my, gut, my opponent can't run. Um, I like the guys that have the finesse specialists. But I've realized more recently that um, for the abilities, it's better for you to guys for you to have the guys with the horns right here. Like you see, Dwight Freeney's a finesse, and also John Randall. But I have Frank Clark and Sheldon Richardson X Factor because I believe that they demand double teams when their X Factor when their abilities activate. So I have these two right here. Um, Finesse specialist just means that you have a quicker way to win on one-on-ones. So you want to have these two archetypes, obviously. Um, these two are key. I wouldn't have an archetype like this just because I don't know what that is, but I, I, I yeah, I don't really know. It might be s stopping. I don't know. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. But um, finesse and the the guy with the horn are the key for your defensive line. So Michael Bennett never sees my field right now. John Randall, when he gets a new card, he'll come back to my field. So yeah, that's all for the um, defensive ends and defensive tackles. There's not too much to talk about other than the fact that they play really well and I enjoy them a lot. So um, moving on to we'll do we'll do safeties. Um, safeties, I like guys that play out of their mind. Um, so I have 
three of these zone guys, I don't think Sean Taylor should be a, that archetype. I think he should be more of a t Pat Tillman archetype. But Sean Taylor has picked up balls before, so maybe he is doing something right. But I like my guys that are tall. Let's just be clear. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, why do you have Ed Reed and Pat Tillman? They're midgets. And you have a point, but Ed Reed, something about Ed Reed plays a little bit different than all the other guys that are 5'11". He will randomly jump up in the air for balls that he shouldn't be getting. And maybe that's just because EA recognizes how good Ed Reed is in real life and wanted to give him... Let me give him his... Uh, hold on. Let me give him his uh, actual font art right here. There we go. Maybe EA recognizes that he's actually really good in real life and decides to give him what he deserves. And I think it's great, but if you look at it, he doesn't get Enforcer, which kind of ticked me off. His hit power is a 93, I believe? Yeah, 93 after the power-up. And his threshold to get Enforcer is 95. So, Ed Reed not getting Enforcer kind of pissed me off, but... It's okay. Um, and Pat Tillman. The thing about Pat Tillman is that he's the Mutt Master. And EA made this card in way in the f first day it came out. So I feel like if you keep your Mutt Master for either offense or defense, Tory Holt is an exception because I've seen that guy literally be a trash can. But that's okay. Um, I figured it out and I learned from that. Pat Tillman makes some plays that at least stops the run at a high rate when he's on the field. Um, obviously I have the abilities on him, but I don't like lurking with him for some reason. I just like him playing a zone so that when my opponent throws at that zone, he might not be able to pick it off, but there's a good chance for me to click on and give my opponent a hit stick, which can ca can cause a fumble. Um, obviously not necessarily true, but that's the reason why I have Pat Tillman. He's very good. Um, if you do have him lurking, he's not a bad lurker, but I personally like to use Sean Taylor just because he's 6'3". Um, Calvin Johnson's a little bit slow. When the golden ticket Calvin Johnson comes out, I'm definitely getting my hand on it. 6'5 corner, I mean 6'5 safety. He's probably the only guy that can cover corner routes as we speak today um, just because he can stretch out and he actually has good catching stats. So um, I believe that Calvin Johnson's a must for any uh, team. Obviously, Sean Taylor's a must. And Ed Reed, you can experiment with that. Um, some people say Brian Dawkins is better. Um, I I don't know. I just, I just like Ed Reed better, I guess. So... I don't have valid proof for that. So, yeah. Um, and then we're just going to go into our CBs, or DBs, rather. So, I recently just got this Quentin Dunbar. Haven't played a single game with him. But the reason why I wanted him, obviously, is he's a Seahawk now. But the reason why I got him is because he has a 99 press. Um, the only other guy that has a 99... Does Night Train have a 99 press? He has a 95. The only other guy that have, has a 99 press on my team is Richard Sherman. I don't think Byron Jones does. Maybe he does. Okay, Byron Jones and Richard Sherman. Um, Richard Sherman has a 99 press, and he's 6'3". He would be my ideal guy, but his speed is only a 97. So, yes, he can press the guy. At, he can press the guy really well. But the problem is that he'll get burnt out of the water. So... I don't like using Richard Sherman on my field just because of that reason alone. Uh, and Byron Jones for me, yes, he's 6'3". What, he's, um, not 6'3", sorry. Um, he's 6 feet and he has 99 press, but I don't think that 6 feet guys can press the way that they should. Um, and I'm only saying that because 
I've seen him play, and he's gotten burnt straight off the gate. Um, but he's a good card. Uh, if you put him in a deep blue, he's fine. But I usually try to press with Quinton and Byron, just because Sherman lacks the speed. Um, so yeah, I, I run I run my safeties. All these safeties play. Um, the only two guys that are going to play now, in my opinion, are just Night Train and Quentin Dunbar. Night Train plays really well. He's a different archetype than everybody else, and I think he's the only one with that archetype is that he can hit anybody he wants. Um, Quentin Dunbar is a guy that can lock up. I think he has a 98-man coverage. Close enough. He can lock up anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, yeah. I these are my uh, these are my DBs. Um, the archetypes for these DBs are varies. Uh, these Trufant, Sherman, and Byron are the guys less le sorry I can't talk less likely to play compared to Quentin Dunbar Night Train. Night Train is always on my field. Um, yes, I have abilities on him, but I don't have him activated just because. I've seen too many people throw at his face, and he does not catch the ball. So, but he, when people catch the ball under him, he does have a high chance of getting a click on from me and causing a fumble. So that's the reason why I have him. Quentin Dunbar haven't played a single game with him, um, but he is six two, and height in this game I believe is crucial. So yeah, um, this is my defense. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, and then we'll just quickly go over special teams. Um, um, this guy should not be here. Sorry. There you go. So special teams. Um, you want you want a kicker with what does he have? Focus kicker and clutch kicker. Um, punchers usually don't matter. I just happen to have one just because. He's a Seahawk, and I pulled him out of a pack. So if he if he didn't have a ninety, if he just had a, if I had to get a punter, I'd probably just get the eighty overall Michael Dixon. I'm not spending punters really don't matter. Um, so yeah, uh, kickoff you always want out of the two to have the highest kick power, obviously, and Michael Dixon has the highest kick power for me. Um, this guy is very accurate, but he can't kick really far, and that's okay. I just need to be accurate. I can get into the 30-yard range if I need to kick a field goal to ice the game. Um, so, yeah. The kick returners and punt returners, I usually always have Devin Hester. Yes, Barry is probably better at this point, but um, something about Devin Hester, especially that he's juiced up with my Seahawks theme team, it's just better. Yes, I can use Barry, um, Tyler Lockett even, but I, I chose my Hester just because I've seen my Hester, I've seen the animations that Hester makes that Tyler Lockett can't make, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah. So this is my team. Um, and then we'll go over to uh, specialists. These don't really matter. Um, John Madden coach, I have him pretty beefed up, and then I have balanced offense on all my uniforms and stadiums. Obviously, you want your two playbooks depending on what you run. These are my two. Um, so yeah, balanced offense for Seahawks, and then visuals really don't matter either. Um, this doesn't give you any any extra chems, by the way. Pete Carroll doesn't give you that plus ten. So don't worry about that. I just did it because I wanted to make an all Seattle team. Um, this is a Seattle team team. It's not an all Seattle team. So um, yeah, and then I got I was able to find this jersey in the auction market. I thought it looked really cool, so I bought it the other day. But yeah, um, this is my team. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, yeah, this concludes this video. Um, be safe, I guess, and just stay out of trouble and don't do anything crazy.